Okay, uh, in the previous video, I kind of did like a high-level overview of what a blockchain is. I used Git to kind of describe that from a high-level, you know, 10,000-foot overview. Um, and I talked a lot about state transitions in the blocks. Um, in the Git context, I called them code changes, and in the Bitcoin context, I said they're transactions. Um, in this video, I kind of want to talk about Ethereum and... Um, take what we learned about Bitcoin and kind of explain the breakthrough that Ethereum had with respect to smart contracts and kind of state in the blockchain. Um, to do that, we, we need to dive a little bit deeper into what these transactions are in the Bitcoin blockchain, and then um, we can generalize that out uh, with respect to Ethereum. Um, so what I've got here is two different blocks and two different blockchains and what I've tried to do is kind of zoom in and see what's happening in each state transition associated with these two blockchains. On the left we have Bitcoin and on the right we have Ethereum. Um, Bitcoin runs off of what's called a UTXO model and uh, Ethereum has what's called in blockchain parlance the account based model, account balance based model. Um, so what UTXO means is when Alice wants to pay Bob in the Bitcoin blockchain, these let's say these are two addresses in the Bitcoin blockchain, what will happen is the nodes will look up Alice's unspent transaction. That's what UTXO stands for. Her un unspent transaction balance in order to say, okay, does Alice have enough Bitcoin to pay Bob this balance that she's trying to send Bob right now? In this case, let's say it's 10, 10 Bitcoin. Alice is trying to send Bob 10 Bitcoin. They'll look up say, is her balance sufficient to do this? If it is, if it's greater than 10 Bitcoin, then allow the transaction to take place. Subtract 10 Bitcoin from her previous UTXO balance and add 10 to Bob. So in this case, Alice would have had 13 Bitcoin and Bob will have 10 now because he had zero previous to this block. Um, what, what Ethereum has done is they recognize this. So this, I, I called it a state transition function at the beginning of the video, but I don't think previous to Ethereum people were really considering the UTXO model as like a state transition function. I, I honestly think they were the first people or the first team to come up with this realization like why don't we just treat it as a state transition state transition where um, the state of the Bitcoin blockchain previous to this block is all of the UTXO associated with every account in this case, Alice being one one small piece of the state. Um, you look up that in the uh, the universal state of the blockchain in order to find her balance, right? That's essentially what you're what you're doing when you make a transaction. So that's how Ethereum decided to kind of abstract what the UTXO model was doing. But what this allowed the Ethereum team to do is um, you can put arbitrary code in place of the addresses now because addresses now have their own balances their own like uh, small world in the ethereum blockchain that they, they can store their own state and, and that gets included in the in entire universal state of the ethereum blockchain um, and so on and so forth uh, so here's a small example of that right where i'm taking okay alice has 10 ethereum bob has three ethereum um, Charlie has zero Ethereum, um, and and then one of the transactions that happens in this block, let's say, is Alice pays Bob seven Ether, right? So what will happen is this is very similar to the UTXO model, right? It, you'll look up this uh, Alice's balance. You'll see, okay, she has sufficient balance to pay Bob, so she pays Bob the seven, um, the seven Ether. Uh, this should actually be a ten, but uh, right because she's Alice is paying Bob 7 Ether, Bob should have 10 Ether in the next block. Um, but one thing I'm showing here is like, okay, now maybe Bob pays Charlie 3 Ether, right? We'll do the same thing look up here. But what's interesting about this is a transaction could actually include a transaction inside of the transaction. Um, so you can have recursive, you know, transaction calls. In this case, like maybe it's a smart contract. This allows you to have a smart contract call another smart contract inside of a transaction, inside of a single transaction, where this wasn't really possible here in the Bitcoin blockchain because you, you'd have to, I mean, technically, yeah, you could do it. You'd look up a UTXO and then maybe, depending on that UTXO, you go to another UTXO in order to find the balance. But 
I mean, this is just much cleaner this way to, uh, to look at these look at the entire state as a one giant state transition function which is what I've got drawn here in this uh, I don't know why it's so tiny what I've got drawn here is um, essentially the way the Ethereum blockchain handles state so each of these blocks has a big old long list of transactions and we're in transactions were just those state transition functions that we looked at above which is similar to the UTXO thing right it's just saying this address is paying this address ether blah 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 um, obviously one of the breakthroughs that the Ethereum Foundation had is you know rather than these state transition functions just being UTXO transfers um, you can actually put arbitrary code in that state transition function, right? So it can be a um, message passing, it can be, uh, again, one smart contract calling another smart contract. You know, the possibilities are endless because it's um, arbitrary code can be executed. Uh, the word I was looking for is turn complete. There's tur it's turn complete uh, code execution. So the way they do, the Ethereum found, uh, blockchain handles this is, I have this large T of S, right? Uh, this large T, what I'm taking to mean here is uh, the entire set of these T's in this one block. So in this block, there are a set of a big old list of these small uh, state transition functions, and this big T is um, all, t taking all of them one step at a time. So what happens is these transactions, transactions happen in the block, they're all listed in the block, and the EVM will essentially step through each one of these transactions and take the state transition and apply it in this Patricia tree. It'll look up the previous state from the previous block here, and let's, in this case, A, right? There's a state A, um, an address A that's a, either a smart contract or somebody's, you know, balance address, and it'll apply this transaction A uh, against that previous state and move it into the new state of the next block. So that's what we're doing here. This S is... All, all known states in this block, we apply all transactions ac across all those states, and that gets us into the next block, this S prime. So now this is our new state in the new block. So that's what kind of the uh, breakthrough that the Ethereum Foundation had is like, it's it's a big, giant, universal... I mean, that that's what they were calling it. I remember when they were doing the crowd, so they were calling it a world computer. I didn't really get it at the time because I wasn't really a computer scientist back then. Um, but that's really what it is. It's it, you know this global state of the entire Ethereum blockchain. If I'm not mistaken, is stored in this Patricia tree, and the transactions are applied on all the state inside this Patricia tree, and that gets us to the next block. And some of these are you know updating balances. Some of these are making calls to smart contracts. You know, there's a whole, again I said Turing completeness. Anything can be essentially written on this. Um, on this blockchain applied to this Patricia tree. Um, with Turing completeness obviously comes um, problems, right? Like I could write in an infinite loop here where I'm just like constantly updating this state and this block will never, like this this transaction would just keep going on and on and on and on and on and on. Right? We'd never finish, we'd never get to A prime and therefore we'd never get to the next block. So they need some way of handling this Turn completeness, and that's what that's what gas is in Ethereum. Essentially, when you're paying your gas costs, you're paying for every computational step you take in the Ethereum blockchain. That way, if someone does in fact run a a um, endless loop, either by accident or a malicious intent, eventually it will stop executing because they'll run out of gas. Nobody has an infinite amount of gas. Some people have a lot of gas and they could probably really slow down the network and, and essentially that's kind of what happens when things like crypto kitties and ICOs happen is like a lot of gas is getting injected in the system uh, the network is coming under heavy load because all these states are getting updated um, very a whole bunch of these states are getting updated you know in low congestion aspects of the blockchain maybe only three of these blocks get updated before we get to the next block but in some when so everyone's trying to hit the same smart contract let's say a here um, to get whatever new crazy token that's out there like this thing's going to get hammered with lots of transactions lots of state transition functions and you know that's a very bad thing